This is Twit. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, and Chip is on the line from Corona, Del Mar, California. Hey, Chip. Hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I just got a Note 8. Actually, my second Note 8. The first Uh-oh. one, the selfie camera, wouldn't focus. Oh, nuts. And my old phone, I have about 464 apps on it. <laughs> uh, the, the photos I can handle pretty easily. But what is the best way, and I also have like 400 contacts, what is the best way to transfer my contacts and my apps from my old phone to the new phone? You're asking the right guy because more than any normal human, I am always transferring over to a new phone, right? Every time a new phone comes out, I have to buy it. So I'm sitting in front of three phones right now, and I'm going to get another one uh, next week and another one after that. So I'm an expert. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I can set up a new phone in just, you know, like an hour. And it's ready and it's just as good to go as, as if I'd had it for years. So here's what, here's what I recommend. There are a couple of uh, handy tools here. First of all, both Samsung and Google will back up your data. Is your previous phone a Samsung phone? No, it was an HTC One Max. Okay. The big, big one. Okay. Uh, I think even if it wasn't a Samsung phone, when you first get your phone, did it say, oh, do you want to copy your data from an old phone? Because the way Android will do that, you put the two phones back to back, the NFC chips recognize each other, and some, but not all of the data will be copied over. If you're going from a Samsung phone, Samsung actually has its own free backup service that will back up everything. But Google does this also. So if you go into uh, the settings... And, uh, you know, I can't remember where Samsung puts it because, uh, it, you know, in, in default Android, it's in the back. It's in the reset and backup. But let me just see where Samsung puts this. But Google will back up your settings, including Wi-Fi passwords and things like that. Yeah, it's under cloud and accounts. Okay, that's where Samsung puts it. And you can see that it will uh, offer you a backup to both Samsung and Google backup. But the Google backup, if you don't have a Samsung account, you just turn on backup my data, you choose your Google account, and then you turn on automatic restore. Now, what it doesn't back up is the actual app, but it does back up a list of the apps. So what will happen when you set up the new phone, you restore your backup. It actually will do that automatically. When you first set up the new Note 8, it will say, what's your Google account? You say, well, my Google account is uh, xyz at gmail.com. And then it will say, do you want us to restore your backup? And you say, yes. This will get you a long way towards it. It doesn't, it doesn't do the apps, but what it does do is it starts downloading them. And actually, if you think about it, that's what the iPhone does too. That's a better way to do it because you want the latest copy of the app. You don't want the copy of the app you had. You want to make sure everything's fresh. So it will re-download from the Play Store all the apps. At that point, you're pretty good to go. The one thing you don't have is your desktop setup, you know, where all your icons are, if you have folders, if you've set up widgets. That you have to do by hand. My recommendation there, though, is to not use the Google launcher, but to use a third-party launcher, Nova launcher, which is the most popular, and the one I use is called Action Launcher. Uh, will, and ADW is another one. will allow you to save your complete desktop configuration to Google Drive or Dropbox or somewhere, and then you can reload it. And you'll get 90% of the way towards your, your desktop setup as well. So with all of that, if you know, depending on the bandwidth for downloading those apps, it takes me very little time to, to get back and running. What actually does a launcher do? So, you know, iPhone people are, are going, what are you talking about, launcher? What is that? Well, every, you know, if you think about any computer... Uh, the thing that you see isn't really the operating system. When you're using Windows, you're not really using Windows. You're using something Microsoft calls Explorer, which is a program, believe it or not, running on top of Windows that gives you an interface, the menus, the folders, access to files, all of that stuff. That's Explorer. On a Macintosh, it's called Finder. And on, on a phone, you have that too. So even if you're using an iPhone, you're using, uh, we call them on, on phones instead of, uh, you know, launcher or uh, instead of uh, Finder or Explorer, we call them a launcher. The Macintosh, the iOS launcher is called Springboard. 
And Apple, because it's Apple, doesn't let you use anything but their launcher. That's one of the one of the things I really wish Apple would do. But I understand why they don't. They, this way, everybody uses an iPhone is using exactly the same interface. One of the reasons people like Android phones is because you can have it any way you want, any flavor you like. So you can download an, a launcher from the Google Play Store. Again, Nova Launcher is the most popular, but I like Action Launcher. They have free versions, and if you want a few more features, you give them a few extra bucks. It's usually not more than a five or six bucks, and it will unlock them. And then you can customize your desk, you know, your your interface uh, to your heart's desire. I'm not a fan of the Pixel, uh, the Google default Pixel launcher that particularly. Uh, it's fairly inflexible and doesn't have that nice feature of being able to back up your setup. But Action Launcher does. Plus, it has some additional nice features that I I've really come to depend on. So I'm a big fan of uh, Action Launcher. But again, it's a very personal decision. That's one of the great things about Android. You don't have to use the default launcher. You can use uh, a variety of third-party launchers, which give you a completely different look and feel. I don't, for instance, I'm not crazy about Samsung's uh, launcher. It's not the it's not the Google Pixel launcher. Samsung calls theirs, uh, I can't remember, they've changed the name. I can't remember what they call it currently. But they have their own look and feel. I, I actually don't use that. But you could. And you can easily switch. The default launcher is set up in the apps settings. It's uh, it's one of the default apps. You, you choose which launcher you want to use, or they call it a home screen. So, so if I wanted to switch back, would it wreck anything? Or? Nope. You switch right back. I'm going to switch back right now. I just switched back to TouchWiz. That's the Samsung launcher. Now it's TouchWiz. Uh, and the phone looks completely different. <laughs> the icons are different. The setup is different. But I can go back into settings. And uh, say, nah, I decided I don't like that. Let me try Nova Launcher. Let me try Action Launcher. Let me try some other launcher. You can have multiple launchers on there and have a different look every day of the week if you like being confused. So it's okay, anybody anybody uses Android should absolutely try this because it's really nice to customize your phone exactly to your to your look and feel. Go okay, ahead. One last question concerning my contacts. Somewhere along the way, something tried to sync something, and this yeah. is one of the problems. You can't tell whose sync it is. I know. And now, for a lot of my contacts, I have the exact same phone number. They're duplicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very common... I hear this all the time. Uh, it's Syncing is hard. And as soon as you add another source, there's always the risk that the source will look like, even though it's the same person, oh, that's a new contact, and it'll add it as a second contact. And there's really no good fix for this except to kind of sit down and pick one source for your definitive contact list it can be any one of these go through it clean it up export it save it before you do any syncing so you can go if something goes wrong you can go back to it and then delete the contacts everywhere else and sync it and everything will be back to normal again and then periodically back up a good copy of it so that if this happens and it will you can always go back to the good copy leo laporte the tech guy there is, just to be complete on this, uh, Google Contacts and many other contacts programs have a merge duplicate contacts feature. So if you go into Google Contacts, you'll find that you can take those duplicates and merge them together. But that sometimes has less than ideal results because it sometimes mushes um, them together a little bit. So, you know, you might, I don't know, occasionally I'll get a mix-up phone number, things like that. But it does help clean up. Okay. Uh, I could also just throw away a whole lot of people. <laughs> well, it's also an opportunity to clean out your contact list. It's a, this is, I, you know, literally on my vacation, two different people came up to me and said, I have triple contacts. It's very, it's syncing, syncing is just a nightmare because it's no, there's no uh, accepted way to say this is the definitive contact. Those are just, the rest of them are duplicates. So rather than delete anything, any Syncing program is going to say, well, I can't tell if it's the same, so I'm just going to give you an extra one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's nice, isn't it? It's very friendly. Just That's one of the great things about you, Leo. I always get one step closer. Thank yeah. You so much. One step forward, two steps back. It's called uh, technology. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's nice to talk to you. Thanks for calling. Thank you, sir. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.